Dave Palumbo here from Muscle Serpent University. Welcome to Monday morning here, and I got my beautiful IMG Annery Head Albino Boa here, and she is just, I don't know how she's so big, because she gave birth to a nice litter this year. We have some Moonglow IMGs and Snow IMGs. A lot of people have been asking me about, but she put her size back on fast. I can't even believe it. Oh my God, we don't want her to get around here because if she does, we'll never get her off. But this girl is a big, big boa. And boas don't usually get this big. This is probably one of my biggest boas I have. But once again, she's so tame because I hold her a lot and she's captive, raised and born. And you know what? A lot of people think boas bite and they're afraid of them. And once again, I don't recommend, you know, a young child handling a boa of this size, but you know, if you handle these snakes from when they're born, and I had this this little girl since she was a hatchling, and I got her from Mike Weitzman at Basely Boas, and she's just been awesome. And this is her first year she produced. She's a, a 2014, and I just waited a long time. I tried to breed her, but she didn't want to, and she when she was ready, she bred, and now I have beautiful baby boas, and unfortunately, I don't really want to speak about this because it's kind of depressing, but my super fire, my black eyed leucistic, all white boa, she finally delivered yesterday, but they were all slugs. Oof. It sucks when you see a boa, you know, carrying a litter for a hundred days, and then all of a sudden you come in one day and you know it's the due date and you see nothing. You just see infertile ova. Very depressing. And you know what? You guys are going to experience this in your breeding programs. If you do breeding, some are going to be super highs, some are going to be super lows. I was almost depressed the whole day because I was really wanting to produce that super fire diamond boa that I have yet to do. I have them in my collection. I haven't made one yet, but it's not. It wasn't to be this year. Maybe next year we could try again. But you know what? That's that's what it's all about. You have to just be persistent. And the only way you can lose is by quitting. Never quit. Let's go into the snake room and see what's going on today. So basically, this is a depressing day. Um, I came in over the weekend. I knew my Super Fire Diamond bow was due to deliver, and she delivered. You can see the remnants of it. All slugs, unfortunately, all infertile ova. She was with a male. Actually, I had her with two males. I saw a couple of locks, not a lot. Obviously, it was, it was not at the right time, possibly. The sperm were not good. Whatever the case may be, she was, it's not her fault. She did her job and the papa didn't do his job. So now I'm gonna have to wait a whole another year to try to breed her again. That was my one really disappointing boa litter of the year. Everything else, you know, I missed a couple on some females that didn't go either the way I would have expected, but she actually went, but didn't, you know, and then just didn't produce babies, unfortunately. And that's part of the game, guys. You have to understand that not always is it gonna work out the way you want it to. You have to just suck it up. I was depressed actually the whole day because I was really wanting to produce some super fire diamonds. It's the one thing I haven't really done that I've really wanted to do. But I'll have to wait till next year and we'll go from there. Let's move on to some more encouraging, more positive things that are going on here at Palumbo's Pythons and Bows on this nice Monday morning. And right here I'm standing against my new ARS rack. Thank you ARS for this beautiful rack. And I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of the process that I went through to get this thing because I got it and this is the new hybrid rack that they have for hatchlings. It comes in a million and one pieces. And my cousin, my wife and my cousin, Aunt Mario and Janet were nice enough to put this thing together for us because they know how busy we are and how inept I am, at least, at, at putting things together in a timely fashion. So they put it together for me. They brought it over in the truck, and you're going to get to see the whole process of how it happened real quickly and then how we got it into my facility. And now it's sitting in back of me, and look at how great it looks. Yeah, we got the new ARS rack. My, David, get up my there. cousin Mario just built it. We're gonna bring it into the into the Palumbo's Pythons and Boas facility. 
Go over there and push it I this think we way. should take it apart, but the problem is it's about to thunderstorm, 50 mile per hour winds, so we're at limited time. Here we go. Yeah, but just stop it right there. Okay. Hold on. Because this thing is by section, and this section came off. It would have taken me 100 hours to build this thing. Mario probably built it in two hours. It actually took us not bad. All together, I'll I mean, his wife Janet. I, I cannot get the credit, Janet. Janet. She, did she do most of it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Janet, thank you. <laughs> All right, push it, guys. All right, here we go. Do it. Go and tilt it. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Yes, yes, victory. Logan, high five. All right. Yeah, buddy. Too slow. <laughs> we made it before the rain. And I got on and off the truck without without tearing another quad. How's that? There you go. So you saw the rack being assembled by my cousins, Mario and Janet, and help from the kids. Here it is, all ready to run now. I'm actually missing three levels of heat, so I got to contact ARS. Uh, they left out three of the heat panels, but it's okay. We'll get them in there. Now I can start transferring some of my snakes that have been waiting to go into racks. They're all ready to go now. And I got a lot of new great ARS racks. Love these things. They glide really well on the track. Area to put the little deli cup in there. Very easy to change the water out. Effortless. I wish all my racks were like this, but I'm cheap. I like to buy used stuff. But this one I broke down because I really needed a big rack with a lot of space. And now we got it. So, but I have a lot of happy babies. All right, yeah, I just wanted to show you my Honduran T positive El Diablo, which is a Honduran T positive blood that I produced last year for my Onyx litter. And ironically, there was no Onyx in here, but I did get that Honduran, hit the Honduran T positive blood. This is a year old, this baby. Look how vibrantly blood red it still is. These Honduran T positives, I think, are the best T positive boas out there in terms of coloring goes. Because most T positives, okay, don't have this level of redness. Now, if you see any other T positive blood that's out there on the market, or that people produce, I should say, on the market, uh, they just, they don't stay red, they get brown. I have ones that are, that are brown out, you know. Most blood's brown out. This little girl has stayed so red. Now, the reason I'm showing it to you is I want to show you the new Onyx litter from this year. All right, here is the Honduran T positive blood with the newest Onyx litter that I had this year, same parents. Here's, it looks like what I am nailed is another Honduran T positive blood. You can see the difference. Look how dark this baby is. He just shed, this is a male, and he's darker. And look how bright and, and light this last year's, one year ago, T-positive blood is. Once again, the Honduran T-positive being the best combination, I believe. We also call this the El Diablo. And you can just, I wanted to put these two together so you can see just with one year difference. Look how nice she kept her color and this little male is really dark red and he's going to get a little lighter and he's going to look just like her probably next year just exquisite look at all those markings i mean the black eyes from the blood obviously black eyes from the blood gene and then all right before i put this little boy away i did sex him he's a boy i want you to look at that that belly so let me turn him over here hold on that belly is, look at that red. Is that unreal? How much more red can you get than that? I mean, that's just insane. Look at that belly. This is what we want. When, when I make a boa, I want red. This is what I want. This is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that red, 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 red color. And that T positive with the blood is amazing. And we're gonna finish off with the ball python hug of the day. That's right, these females love to hug the water bowl. 
or to cool their bodies down, usually if they're going to ovulate, or sometimes I notice right before they're going to lay some eggs. I believe this girl has got some, a lot of eggs in her. They seem to like to cool themselves out if it's too warm in the room. And that's, that's the hug of the day. That's my lavender albino female hugging that water bowl. A little pissed off that I'm disturbing her. But look at that lavender. Lavender albino, just, you know, I love albino, but lavender albino is just incredible. What's interestingly is that if you look at candino, the candino, which is the candy gene that lines up allelically with the albino gene, looks very similar to lavender albino. And this is Candino. This female is going to go too. She's hugging. She's hugging too, but she doesn't win the hug of the week or the hug of the day because the lavender albino beat her to it. But look at this Candino. The Candino is, is almost looks just like a lavender albino. You, you would have trouble take, telling them apart. Both amazing steaks. I think I'm going to start doing a lot more with Candino stuff because I really love it. And I, I have some, some good Candino stuff, so I shouldn't even say it, but I'm not really, I'm not revealing it yet. We'll see if we produce some good babies this year, and then I can show off some and brag a little bit about my Candino stuff. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up all the action here today at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas. We had some ups, we had some downs, we got a great new rack, you saw us assemble it. Sometimes that's fun to get that in, it's like a Christmas present. And then sometimes you have downs, like, you know, my Super Fire Diamond Boa, just given those infertile ova, you know, slugs as we like to call them. No babies this year for her. No super fire diamonds in, in the cards for Palumbo's Pythons and Bows. But you know what? Once again, you got to take the losses with the wins. And we've had a lot more wins here this year. So I only look at the positive in my life. And that's what you guys should too. Uh, for now though, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Like this video. Turn on your notifications. And we'll see you back tomorrow morning.